everyone has been really interested in the flower tea we make. So I'm going to take you through how we make this flower tea, drying it, storing it for winter. This is a recipe of Mary's' family's. They have been making for years. But of course, because I can't help it, I put my own little twist on it too. So these are my calendula. Calendula is commonly uh, something used in skincare but it's actually really good for your insides as well. And the trick to getting lots of calendula is that as soon as a bud is anywhere from there to open, and these will close up at night, um, you pick them and then they will just keep producing and keep producing. Like I have been picking these every other day for weeks. They just keep on going. And when you pick calendula, your fingers will get sticky from the resin. And the resin is the medicinal quality that's just so good for you. This variety is called calendula resina. And it's known for its super high medicinal content. This is one seed pack. Maybe not even quite because Freya helped plant and you know how that goes. This is cilantro that's gone to seed. But... You can see and they're pretty tall. Let's see, I'll show you how tall they are. They're up to my knees. They're pretty decent size. But I'm really happy with this variety. I will definitely grow it again. When I'm done picking, this is what it looks like. And tomorrow or the next day, I will pick just as many as again. It's unbelievable how fruitful they are. As for marigolds, as far as I know, all varieties of marigolds are edible. We got marigold plants and from a local nursery the kids picked out some plus just seeds. So it's a similar thing and that all you do is pick your flowers. These are a bit damaged by frost but they're still good and I grew yellow just a second hand and white varieties uh, but you can, there's different colors and I think it'd be fun next year to grow different varieties for the color variation in tea. So some marigolds have little blooms and you can pick them versus some have these massive ones. So obviously if you're drying for tea, it's better to pick ones that are gonna have bigger blooms. If you're gonna eat the whole cucumber, you can have it, sure. Um, I'm not quite sure on this variety, but basically I guess I would just read your seed packs or whatever, because if you want for tea, you want more. Ooh, thank you, Hamish. So then when I get to the house, my super low-tech drying system is that I take these and I pull the petals off, just kind of a two-handed job, and I spread them around. And I'll do a few days worth all in the same pile because they all just kind of dry out. These ones I'm drying out as is for seeds, so they're staying there. And these are the calendula. I haven't put the fresh ones out yet them from my basket and they just go out and when I remember once a day kind of thing I give them a stir around it's just a box zucchini story. and a little zucchini so the first pile of calendula I did in a beer flat and every day I would just add the handful sprinkle over top and do them all together and once it got pretty full, I started a new one, but I've got lots of calendula dried. We're gonna have more than we need, and I'll be sharing some for sure. The next ingredients we need are rose petals, which again, when the rose is blooming, you just pluck the petals off and dry them in the exact same way. I mean, you could throw this stuff in a dehydrator, but it hasn't even been that hot. Our house is 20 degrees Celsius, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, and these things dry out just fine. It's more about airflow and keep them out of direct sunlight. I'm gonna move that, I just moved it there so you could see it. The last ingredient that you need is dried mint. So, you can 
harvest homegrown mint and dry it in the same way. Or you can, because it's a little easier to do bundles, you can hang up bundles. We did that in our living room. Marius picked wild mint, so we have, these are gallon bags. Lots and lots of wild mint, more than a year's worth, and we'll be sharing. So now that we've got all these ingredients, we can make ourselves some tea mix. Do you have to say Hamish? I am fish. What's his name? Junior. Where is he? He's up here. Right here. What type of fish is he? Uh, a Siamese feather. My old one's name was Fighter. What happened to Fighter? Ah, uh, he died. Mm. Me need some time. At least he lasted for a year. And this is unicorn to me. This is Freya's fish. Those are some really dirty little fingers, kid. So we've got all our dried flowers and herbs, and now it's time to mix up tea. And it couldn't be any simpler, and this is very open for... Let me take her. Interpretation on what your family likes and doesn't like. I'm gonna give you kind of a guideline framework and from there you can decide what you want to do. So if you want to make classic tea like Mary's family makes, um, they call this their tea mix and with their tea mix they make what they call honey tea cow juice. First time I heard that it was kind of funny but it's a huge nostalgia thing for their family. Like one of his brothers who doesn't even really like tea, if I say, do you want some honey tea cow juice? He's like, yeah, because that's what they get from when they're little kids and that's what the grandkids get at their grandparents' house too, like my kids. So honey tea cow juice is this tea with just milk and honey. And normally I wouldn't add milk to a herbal tea, but this works and they all love having milk in it. Mary's always adds milk to it. So. Honey tea cow juice is one part dried calendula flowers and you can buy these or you can grow them and dry them yourself. One part marigold flowers and two parts dried mint. Um, we have lots of dried mint. So your part can be by measurement like with a cup or it can be you could weigh it on a scale. Either works because they're all similar weight per cup. So, baby squirrel. See if you'll be happy in here. So all we're gonna do, we're gonna take a big metal bowl and we're gonna take a cup measurement. Or this is gonna make, we're gonna make one quart of classic honey tea cow juice. And that is just then one cup of calendula. A few stems in there, which aren't the end of the world, but they're just kind of annoying. Then, and so I don't even like take them off of their little, stem thing. I just put it all in. It's fine. One cup of marigold flowers. And two cups of mint. I wouldn't call them tightly packed. I call them like loosely packed cups. So this is our classic honey tea cow juice tea mix. I love the flavor of this. That being said, you don't have to stop there. There is a big tractor with hay bales going by. You don't have to stop there. This is just our base. And this can be however you want to choose. So some things that I like to add are some dried rose petals. 
red clover. And all of these things, you don't have to grow them. If you can't grow them, that's cool. You can buy all of these online from somewhere like Mountain Rose Herbs. You'll find all of these. Um, some calendula, my mother-in-law grew this and gave me a quart of it, which was very fun. Um, chamomile, did I say chamomile or calendula? I meant chamomile, chamomile. Um, I'm out of nettles, but nettles would be another thing that would be really good to add in here. If there's another dried herb that you really love, you could add like spruce tips. Did you lose your spoon? you smacking your face on the table so to this one I don't think I'm gonna add any chamomile today but I am gonna add rose petals and some red clover um, the red clover red clover yeah I'm just gonna so I do again just one part one part rose petals So I decided I'm gonna add a half part, so half a cup of the chamomile to this. So with this tea mix, you can put it in tea bags, but we just do it in a teapot. Like I just take a small handful in a big teapot, and from there, yes, him. Then I just have a tea strainer that I put in the cup when I pour it out. Because we are not just making a flavored tea, but we are really making a herbal infusion, you wanna go heavy on the herbs in your pot of tea. And I'd say I'm using like a third to a half cup of this tea mix in my teapot. I have a big teapot. So if you had, like I'd say my teapot's like one and a half to two quarts. So I'm using like a third to a half cup. So if you have a smaller one, say a one quart, one liter teapot, you'd be doing like a quarter cup. If you're just brewing one cup, I'd say you'd want a solid tablespoon, fat tablespoon worth of this just to get all those lovely benefits for your body, your skin, your digestion. This tea, guys, you're gonna love it. <laughs>